Okay, I'm gonna go, go ahead and get started. It's about 7.30. My name is Bob Foreman. I am a golf fitness professional. Uh, I have certifications with Tyler's Performance Institute and also a golf uh, functional specialist with the Gray Institute. Been in the uh, exercise field for over 35 years, uh, working in uh, corporate and commercial and private club lately. Over the past few, I'm the former director of fitness at Congressional Country Club. And uh, I wanna take you through kind of a basic uh, stretch program tonight. We're gonna focus on total body. So please participate with me if you'd like, just find a space on the floor. Uh, you can kick off your shoes and feel comfortable. And uh, we're gonna isolate, like I say, pretty much uh, every body part that we're gonna use. I'll explain the stretch, I'll explain the significance as it relates to the golf swing and to injury prevention. So uh, this is recorded, as I mentioned, so I will post it on my website at www.golffitcarolina.com. That's one F and one T. And it'll be up there for uh, two weeks and you can access it as, as often as you'd like. The game plan after that is just to do, do weekly uh, programs and uh, you know, we'll kind of progress from this basic stretch into some other stuff as well. So if you're gonna participate, find a piece of turf. We're gonna start on our backs. And we're gonna start with the lower body. So working with golfers over the past 17 years, I've found that there are definitely some common deficiency areas and we're gonna discuss those. I'm gonna show you some stretches that you can do and some exercises that you can do to fix those deficiencies. First one we're gonna do is gonna isolate the hip flexor, which is the muscle in the front part of the hip. I want you to place one leg down on the floor, bring the other knee up to the chest, grab behind the knee so that you don't hyperflex the knee and just pull that knee right into your chest. Now this is going to stretch the upper hamstring of the leg that you're hugging it's going to also stretch this hip flexor, which is the muscle here in the front part of the hip. The hip flexor actually starts on the spine, it comes through the hip and then attaches to the thigh. If this muscle is tight, as you're doing this exercise, you may feel your leg start to come up off the floor a little bit, which would indicate a tightness to that side hip flexor. Now the significant of the hip flexors and then the hamstrings, which we're gonna do next, is that because they attach to the hip bone, they can cause, they can prevent that freedom of movement that you would really like in that hip and reduce your hip mobility throughout the golf swing. So we're gonna do this static stretch. Let's switch to the other side, bring the other leg up. Again, grab behind the knee, especially if you've had knee replacement. Just pull that knee right into the chest as far as comfort allows. Always to a gentle stretch. Never go beyond that point, right? If one is good, two is not better when you're stretching. So always to a gentle stretch. And the second thing you want to always remember is breathe. Don't hold your breath. A lot of people will have a tendency to hold their breath. And that is called a valsalva maneuver. And I'll explain what that is in just a second. All right, let's do that just one more time. Each leg, pull in. Now a good static stretch should be held for approximately 30 seconds. And the reason being is that you have these stretch receptors in the muscle that prevent you from overstretching. And after about 20, 25 seconds, they become inhibited. So if you don't give it that full 30 second stretch, you may not get the full benefit from the static type stretch. Okay, let's switch to the other side again. And again, always go to your comfort zone. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Always to a gentle stretch. All right, so that's a called a knee hug, all right? Stretching those hip flexors. Let's focus on the hamstrings in the back of the leg. So again, we're gonna place one leg flat on the floor. We're gonna take a straight leg this time and we're gonna grab behind the knee and we're gonna gently pull towards the head. Now your foot should be in a pointed position, not flexed, pointed. That's going to reduce the calf muscle. It's gonna take the calf muscle out of the stretch. If you flex your foot, 
that'll engage the calf muscle, that may take away from the isolation of the hamstring. So point that foot, pull that knee gently towards you till you feel that gentle stretch back in through the back of the thigh, working those hamstrings. Okay, let's slowly lower that one down. Let's go to the other side. Now your range of motion may be somewhat limited, especially you guys. You guys may have a very tight hamstring. I've seen a lot of guys, this is as far as they can get. Uh, the goal, ultimate goal, would be to get 90 degrees if you can. Now the significance with tightness in the hamstring is that again, it'll impact hip mobility, but the other significant factor with tight hamstrings is that it will impact your lower back. Yeah, I take a break. The reason being the hamstrings are attached to the hip bone from down below. So if the hamstrings are tight, what's gonna happen over a number of years, it's gonna take that hip bone, it's gonna pull it downwards. So that hip will rotate backwards. Now your low back muscles are fanned out across the top of that hip bone and then they all converge into this lower lumbar curve. So if the hip bone rotates, stretches those muscles out, it's gonna leave you susceptible for muscle strain, soreness the next day after you play golf. But the more significant impact is that as that hip bone rotates, it's going to take that normal curve in that lower spine, that lumbar spine, and actually straighten it out a little bit. And you would think that that would be a good thing, but that's actually a misalignment in the spine. And anytime you have a misalignment in the spine, you're going to put more pressure on the discs. You're going to wear those discs out faster. You're going to get into that slip, ruptured disc, sciatica. All right, so the hamstrings play a significant role in low back stability. Tight hip flexors do the opposite. Tight hip flexors will pull the hip bone forward and rotate that hip bone anteriorly forward, causing the curve there to actually increase, right? And again, that's a misalignment, puts more pressure on the discs, something you don't want if you're a golfer. So if you do experience low back discomfort, check your hamstrings, check your hip flexors. If one or both are tight, you got to work on working flexibility. You'd be surprised what a difference that can make. Okay, so I showed you a static stretch for the hamstrings, right? We were just stretching and holding for about 30 seconds. Now, if you're really tight in the hamstring, and a lot of people, again, will have trouble getting past 45 degrees, the static stretch may not provide the threshold that you want to improve flexibility range of motion. So I'm gonna show you a dynamic stretch, which involves movement. So what you're going to do is, again, grab behind the knee, point the toe to the ceiling, and you're going to alternate bending the leg, straightening the leg, bending the leg, straightening the leg. You wanna do that about 20, 25 times. Now this is using a, a principle called reciprocal inhibition, which means when you contract one muscle group, you relax the opposing muscle groups. So as you straighten the leg, you're going to contract your quad muscles here in the front part of your thigh. And as they contract, you're gonna relax the opposing muscle groups. Now again, your range of motion may be somewhat limited, but over time, as you do this stretch, and again, that's one of the, the, the keys with this is the consistency of which you do it, all right? Your range of motion will get longer and longer, all right? About, again, 20 to 25 each side. Let me just let some more people in here. All right, next, we're gonna focus on internal hip rotation. The adductors, the muscles on the inside part of your thigh. I see a lot of golfers that are tight in the internal hip rotation department, and that's gonna limit, again, hip mobility. And because of that, you're gonna see, generally see a lot of excessive lateral movement in the golf swing, sway in the back swing, a slide in the down swing. Not good because it's gonna rob you of club head speed and distance, all right? So the internal hip rotators, a lot of golfers, they're tight. 
So I'll share a couple of good stretches that you can do to focus on those guys. So again, on your back, your feet flat, knees up. You're going to separate the feet as wide as you can get them. And then you're going to bring the knees, both knees down to the right while you keep your shoulders flat. All right, again, go as far as comfort allows. We're working, if you're going to the right, you're working internal hip rotation on this left leg. You're working external hip rotation on the right leg. Just hold for 30 seconds, or if you prefer, you can do 15 second holds and just alternate back and forth two or three times. The more the merrier. You can never get enough stretching, believe me. All right, bring them back up, reposition the feet, bring the knees down to the left. Now we'll work an internal hip rotation on this right leg, external rotation on the left side. Now the arm positioning, can be another progression to this stretch, right? Let's bring the knees back up top. Let's go with the knees down to the right. Now you can either keep your arms down at your side, all right? Or if you'd like to get a little more of a stretch in through the trunk and through the lats and shoulders, bring your arms overhead and just let them lie there. All right, that'll give you internal hip, it'll give you a trunk type stretch. Shoulders, as you can see, I can have trouble putting my arms on the floor. So I need to work on this one a little bit. Head back up top, reposition the feet, bring the knees down to the left, keep the arms hanging out overhead, and just breathe. Now, when you hold your breath, when you stretch, as I said, it's called a valsalva maneuver. That's not a good thing because it increases the abdominal pressure that can impede blood flow back to the heart. Not a good thing for the heart. So don't hold your breath, make sure you're breathing. Okay, progression to this. Bring the feet together, keep the knees together. This is called a dish rag stretch. You're gonna cross your right leg all the way over your left. So whatever leg is on top, that's the side you're gonna come down toward. So we're gonna bring the knees down to the right as far as comfort allows. Now be careful because this is gonna be more of a stretch, more intense of a stretch. Keep those shoulders flat if you can. Again, we're working internal hip rotation right now on this left leg. This is also, this stretch is also a good stretch for the low back. If you have that low back tightness, excellent stretch to kind of work on that a little bit. Okay, let's go back up top. Bring the left knee, left leg over the right. Nice and easy, bring the knees down to the left. Arms can be at your side or overhead. Just breathe, hold the stretch, not your breath. Always do a gentle stretch. Now, when you're going left and right in a lot of these stretches, make a mental note. Am I tighter going this way than I am that way? All right, because a lot of people were, were out of whack. A lot of us are out of whack because of what we do, what we don't do. Sitting during the day gets us out of whack. The sports we play in, golf will get you out of uh, whack. It'll, it'll create deficiencies in your body. So as you're stretching to the left, stretching to the right, just kind of take a mental note if you feel tighter on one side versus the other. And if you do, spend more time on that tighter side. You want that side to catch up because the ultimate goal for stretching is to get muscle symmetry back into the body, okay? All right, so again, right leg over left, nice and easy, bring the knees down to the right, arms on top. Now a third progression you can do with this stretch and the other ones is to bring your arms up to the ceiling and Bring them opposite, lower them opposite your knees. So if my knees are going to the right, I'm going to bring my arms down to the left. This is called the dish rag. You're taking your body like a dish rag and you're wringing it out. Now, this is also known as the X factor in golf, right? The disassociation between the lower body and the upper body. So we got the lower, lower spine, hip going to the right. We got the upper spine going to the left. The same thing that happens in the body during the transition of the backswing into the downswing. 
Okay, let's try it to the other side. Cross the left leg over the right. Bring the knees down to the left. Arms up and then down to the right. Again, always do a gentle stretch. We can't overemphasize not to overstretch because you can get hurt. And just breathe. Again, the good one for internal hip rotation, also for the lower back. All right, I'm gonna throw in a little strengthening exercise here. The glutes, the glutes, the glutes are your power muscles in the golf swing. All right, it's where you're gonna get all your power from. And again, unfortunately, a lot of us are weak in the glutes because we sit a lot during the day. And when you sit, you elongate the glute. So over time, you weaken the glute. Anytime you elongate a muscle, you weaken it. So this is a great exercise. This is also an assessment. You can almost assess yourself to see how strong your glutes are. So on your back, feet flat, knees up, bring the heels in fairly close to the body as best you can. What you're gonna do is arms down at your side. You're going to lift your hips, just your hips up into the air. That's called a bridge. That's going to isolate the glutes, both glutes. This, you should be able to hold for 20 seconds, 25 seconds, 30 seconds, a day and a half. This should be not a difficult exercise for you. If it is, if you get a lot of wobble, if you're cramping up in the hamstrings, your glutes are weak, okay? Now, to isolate right side, left side. Again, arms down at your side, hips come up. Try to keep them as high as you can. Extend one leg out, thigh to thigh. Okay, we don't want this, we want thigh to thigh. And just breathe. Now again, you should be rock solid. There shouldn't be any wobble, there shouldn't be any dip. And if your hamstring over here is cramping up, that's a sure sign that you got weakness on that side glute, right? So, Again, hips up, right leg out, breathe, hold for a 10 to 15 second count. Seven, eight, nine, and switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and last. Three sets, 10 to 15 seconds, a good uh, regime to go after for the glutes. And again, you want to be rock solid, no wobble, no cramping up. Glutes will also protect your lower back when you're standing. If your glutes are weak, if you're one of those individuals that after standing for a lengthy period of time, your back starts to bother you, chances are your glutes are weak, okay? So work on this. This is a good isolation. This is one of the better exercises to isolate right side, left side glute. And it's a good test to see whether or not they're sufficient or not. Okay, let's go on to our side. Internal hip rotation, again, we emphasize this area a lot because a lot of people are deficient in this. So we're gonna do what's called a reverse clamp. So if you're lying on your right side, knees together, feet together, bring the knees forward a little bit, we're going to do what's called a reverse clam, which means we're just gonna lift just our foot up in the air as high as we can, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll do 15 total, four to go, three, two, one more, and relax. Now, so we're taking this leg, this top leg, and we're putting it into internal hip rotation. So we're working that range of motion. You may also feel this right here, right? That's the gluteus medius. Very important muscle to keep strong because it's a hip stabilizer. It holds the hip in place while the rest of these muscles are attached moving body parts. If that gluteus medius is weak, your hip is going to move while you move that's gonna be an inefficient movement pattern to cause injury. The other thing that a weak gluteus medius can do is allow this thigh bone to rotate inward, which can cause knee problems to that side. 
Again, very important muscle to keep strong. Okay, let's roll it over. Knees together, feet together. Just the top foot going up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, as many as you're comfortable with. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. You can do a couple of sets of those again, more the merrier. If your range of motion is right here, that's not good, okay? You wanna be able to get that foot up there as best you can, but you gotta be patient and you gotta be persistent with the stretches and the exercises and you'll get there, okay? All right, let's move up the body a little bit. Work on the chest or work on the shoulders. External shoulder rotation, being able to rotate the arm back. Again, you're gonna use that in both the backswing and the downswing. If you don't have a range of motion in the shoulder, you may limit your backswing, which may limit your club head speed. You may change your swing plane. You may go into what's called reverse spine. You may start leaning back towards the target, which is going to pretty much cause you to be an upper body swinger. You'll come over the top, you'll cast, not a good situation. All right. We want to be in a good position so that we can initiate the downswing from the ground up, right? With the legs, the hips, the trunk, the arms, and then the club. So this is a good little exercise to work, shoulder rotation, and also to open the chest. This is probably one of the better stretches for the upper body for golf. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to lie on your side again. This is called an open book. You're going to get into the fetal position. So everything's 90 degrees, arms 90 degrees, okay? You're going to take this top arm while you keep your knees together. You're going to maintain the angle and you're just going to rotate over to the other side. So you're opening the book. Your head will rotate. You can stop looking at the ceiling and just continue with the arm until it won't go any further. And again, don't force it. Let gravity do the work for you, okay? Keep the angle. Don't straighten the arm out. Don't bend it. Try to keep your goal posts. And just hang out there for 15 seconds or so. Let gravity, again, be your friend. If this knee is coming up, you can hold the knee down with this opposite hand. Good stretch. Again, you may feel this in the lower back, but primarily we want to focus on that shoulder mobility. Okay, we can close the book. And you want to do like three of them, right? And then we can switch to the other side. Now you can also, to enhance the rotation in the shoulder, you can get light weights. And again, light weights. Don't go crazy with the weight, you know, one pound, two pounds at the most is enough to give you some, uh, some intensity, some traction there to increase that shoulder mobility. Don't go heavier because you're gonna put a lot of strain on the shoulder. So if you take a weight in each hand and do the same exercise, just open it up, okay, maintain your angle. Because now the weight is over here in my hand, that's gonna help with that external shoulder rotation that I'm looking to get in my golf swing. Hold for about a 15 count or so. Breathe. And then bring it back. Okay. You can do it without weights or with weights. Breathe. And relax. Okay, let's do a couple to the other side because you always got to work balance. You don't want to do just one side. You really want to maintain balance in the body. Okay, knees up, arms, top arm, keep the angle, come across, head stops at the ceiling. Now notice my hand's not touching the floor. I have to work on external shoulder rotation here. That's where a little weight will help. Now, again, guys, we tend to be a lot tighter than the ladies. A lot of ladies will have both arms flat on the floor, right? I mean, that would be a great goal, but the goal here is to number one, prevent 
your flexibility from getting worse because of that muscle's tendency is to just tighten, okay, close the book, relax. And then go ahead and open the book again for the second one. And the more active you are, the tighter the muscles become. So it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't, you gotta stretch, okay? Cause that's gonna help reduce uh, aches and pains. It's gonna help reduce injury. Uh, it's gonna help keep balance in the body muscle symmetry, and it's the lack of symmetry. Okay, you can close the book. It's the lack of symmetry, those deficiencies, the tightness that causes the misalignment, which causes arthritis, and then you're getting your shoulder replaced and your, or your knee replaced. So if you don't fix the deficiencies, you don't fix the problem. Okay, I'm kind of talking a lot this first session. Just want to kind of get you guys educated and excited to stretch. Let's do some uh, all four stretches. Okay, so mid back, all right? So you've got cervical spine, you've got mid back, which is your thoracic spine, 12 vertebrae, and then your lumbar spine, five vertebrae, and then the five fused uh, vertebrae down here, your sacrum. Rotation from the golf swing should come from here, thoracic, not here. Okay, this is where rotations should come from. And a lot of people are tight in the mid back for the same reason, sitting at a computer, not being active and not focusing on range of motion exercises for that mid back area. So here's one that you can do to focus on the thoracic spine. Okay, so we're gonna be on all fours. I want you to keep this right elbow locked. Don't bend it. You're going to take your left hand and you're going to reach through between your right hand and your right knee and rotate the upper body until you feel that gentle stretch in that mid back area. You can sit back a little bit on your heels. Don't force this one and just breathe. Keep looking down at the ball. Well, for about a 10 to 15 count, I've got some pops going on in my back, save myself a chiropractic fee, and then relax. Okay, keep the left elbow locked. Take the right hand, reach through, breathe. Don't bend that elbow. Always to a gentle stretch. Do you have a tighter side? Spend more time on that tighter side. and come back. Let's do that one more time. Again, reach through. This is called the reach through. Tight mid back. Again, you're gonna limit your back swing. May prevent you from getting over onto your target side in the downswing follow through. And if you're tight, your mid back is tight and you wanna make the switch, and you wanna make that big shoulder turn that you read about each month in the golf journals, something's gotta give. And that something is usually your lower back. Because if you can only swing the club back so far because your mid back is tight, but you continue to make that shoulder turn, you gotta recruit that lower back. The lower back only has about five to 10 degrees of rotation. It doesn't like rotation. So if the mid back is tight, that lower back is gonna do more than it really wants to. And so over time, it's gonna start talking to you, okay? All right, now we just got a couple of minutes here left. Let me do a couple of standing stretches. And again, you can access this video over the next couple of weeks just to go over those stretches again. I know it's a lot of information, but like I say, the game plan here is after the next two weeks is to do this on a weekly basis. We will get into you know, more different types of exercises. We'll get into foam rolling, which is a big thing. Get into a lot of good stuff. Okay, again, mid back. This is a great stretch to do uh, before the round and during the round, okay? A lot of people, if they do stretch, they stretch before they play, but then while they're out there five, six hours, they don't do anything. So the body tightens up. 
especially now the weather is going to get a little cooler out there. So here's a good stretch to do while you're out there. Okay, take your golf club or a stick, hold it out in front of you, place your right palm up, left palm down. You're going to flip the club to the left and then rotate to the left. Look straight ahead so you get some cervical rotation in there until you feel this stretch behind that right shoulder, mid back area. Breathe, hold for about 10 to 15, and then bring it back. Switch the hands the other way. Flip to the right, rotate to the right. Look straight ahead, don't turn your head. You want that cervical rotation benefit. Breathe, always to a gentle stretch. This is a great stretch. Everybody I show this stretch to, they're like, oh, this is a great stretch. And then come back and repeat two or three times to each side. Okay, last one for tonight. We're gonna focus on the neck. Again, cervical rotation. You wanna be able to make that turn, right? And not have to take your eye off the ball. So from a standing position, I'm gonna have you bring your right ear down to your right shoulder. Stay straight, don't lean. And then reach down to the floor with the left hand. This is gonna depress the shoulder. We're gonna get a good stretch in through the left side of the neck here, right? Always to a gentle stretch, don't go beyond and just breathe. Again, a static stretch. We're gonna hold for about a 15 count. If during the 15 seconds you feel the muscle ease up a little bit, you go a little bit further into the stretch. Hey, relax, shake them out. And then let's go left ear, left shoulder, and then reach down to the floor with the right hand. So we're depressing the right shoulder. We're getting a stretch in through this right neck area. Breathe, don't lean. Hold for about a 15 cal and you're good to go. All right, one more real quick one because didn't really have a lot of time here tonight to talk about posture, especially shoulder posture. Seeing a lot of rounded shoulder postures today because of the cell phone, computers, even in the teens. Teens are probably the worst offenders. It used to be just an older golfer's disease. And what happens is you take it out on the golf course with you in that C posture. All right, where you bowed over. Now there's no way you're gonna be able to get that club back when you're in a bowed posture, when your, your, your spine is bent. The only way you're gonna be able to get the club back is if you stand up in your backswing and that's gonna change your whole swing plane. It's gonna mess you up, all right? So for a rounded shoulder posture, which again is kind of an epidemic these days, they said before COVID hit, it was going to be shoulders and necks because of our postures, because this rounded shoulder posture sets you up for shoulder impingement, especially the supraspinatus, uh, supraspinatus, supraspinatus muscle that comes through the shoulder that gets trapped between two bones, and then you get uh, tears in the tendon, so it's basically a rotator cuff issue. You also cramp out the heart and the lungs, you crowd them out. So you reduce their efficiency. So not good from a health perspective or golf. So we need to stretch the tight chest muscles and we need to strengthen these weakened rhomboid muscles in your upper back that connect your shoulder blade to your spine, right? So that we can go from here to this to get those shoulders back. So here's a little quick little stretch. Love it. Love this stretch. You're going to stand, place your hands out in front of you, palms down, you're going to bring your elbows back, and you're going to pinch your shoulder blades together. Okay, hold that pinch throughout. Externally rotate your shoulders so there's external rotation in the shoulder. Keep the pinch. Now bring the elbows down into the back pocket. Keep the pinch. Lower the hands and relax. Yeah, huh? good one. Okay, again, palms down, elbows back, keep the pinch. Externally rotate the shoulders. 
Bring the elbows down into the back pocket. Hands down. And relax. All right, so 30 minutes, we went over a little bit. Uh, got pretty much total body. We worked on the hamstrings, hip flexors, internal hip rotators, glutes. We worked on the X factor, disassociation of the upper. And we just briefly went over each one of these, shoulder rotation, neck rotation, mid-back range of motion, a lot of stuff there. All good stuff, all is gonna help you on the golf course, guaranteed if you just do this on a regular basis. So I'm gonna load up this on the website. It'll be there for a couple of weeks. Take advantage of it, access it as often as you want. And then uh, we're gonna start weekly sessions. I'm gonna charge a little bit, be like five bucks or something a session, not a whole lot, but we'll get into different stuff, like I said. All right, thanks for joining me tonight. Hopefully I'll see you in a couple of weeks.